Hi, good morning everybody. So I couldn't get on a live. The internet here wasn't quite good enough. I'll do another one next weekend from uh, the house. So I am just coming out here to give you a little idea of the view. I'm going to send a little video of the pool and everything, but um, we're, yeah, everybody's, it's our day off. So everybody's at the pool today and uh, I thought I would come over here. So I'm just going to give you a little look at the view. I'm walking barefoot as usual, so. It's so beautiful here. It's a sunny, sunny morning and just so amazing. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're doing here or what sacred femininity teacher training is. So I'm going to sit here with my, my friend Buddha and talk you through it. So this isn't easy to really explain. Uh, because it's not just one thing, but it is kind of what it says on the tin, yeah? So, um, as many of you listening to this will know, the feminine has been something quite suppressed for some time. We, have a, we live in a very matri uh, masculine world, and women coming together like this, so there's 26 of us here in this group, um, and... Women coming together like this is something that is, isn't done so often. And in some places still, obviously, but um, in, in other places not. And it's so, so magical. So we've been really like cracking things open um, this week, straight away. Loads and loads of practices, different things throughout the day, like um, to really feel into our bodies, our trauma, our emotions, our our shakti, our energy, moving it and feeling it and witnessing it. And I'm quite a feeling person anyway, so um, I'm really open to this. But I knew that um, for a long time, even though I was feeling a lot, I wasn't really feeling because I wasn't safe. So for those of you that know me, I uh, know that I had a couple of pretty disastrous relationships, but... Um, I'm going to talk about them in a really positive way because it's obviously what I needed to learn. And many of you will be in a similar situation or have been in similar situations where you know that you shouldn't be in something, but for some reason you're stuck, let's say. And I realised that in that time in my life, which was a long time, probably over eight years or so, um, I was in stress response all the time. I was living out my need to fix and please people and act for love to receive love and that really attracts narcissistic um energies yeah so if you're the 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 fixer the empath then that's what you can draw in in order to need to heal yourself but during that time i used yoga and meditation to totally save me as well as some key people around me a, a lot of people find it really hard and don't support you and i i've really found that that during that time some people turn the back because it's, it, they can't understand it they can't understand why you would keep going back to that or keep staying in it so this is one of the things yeah we're in week one and uh, this is one of the things that I knew would probably come up because um, although I was feeling in my body with yoga a lot of what I was doing was not going into the yin yeah I was in my yang energy my masculine active doing energy so even when I was feeling and I was feeling heartbroken and betrayed for nearly all of those eight years um, and unloved and unlovable and unworthy. Then I was kind of switching that up with rather than I did sit with it, but rather than do yoga nidra, do yin yoga, you know, have a bath, be really receptive to that. It was too painful. And so I would do the only thing I knew, which was like the yang. Yeah, like working out and doing yoga, but power, you know, really, really strong. Um, and that's great. It moved the energy, it helped me, but I didn't really have an opportunity very often to really sit with how I felt or I did sit with it, but not, yeah, not, not in support, not in a group, not, not like this. So <clears throat> this first week we've been doing is all about Kuan Yin. So any of you that know Buddhism or Chinese medicine, she's also Avalokiteshvara in Buddhism. 
And she is the representation of compassion and um, yeah, compassion for yourself as well as others. So I always really resonated with Avalokiteshvara and Kuan Yin when I had Reiki. So this for me was really, really um, amazing to step into the, the energy of her this week and be really compassionate for myself and sit with the things that have happened and that, I'm, that I might be holding in my body. So I suffer with a lot of um, hold, like holding pattern in my in my stomach I have digestive issues and a lot of it is like holding and then a bit of a disconnect from my lower chakras my sacral chakra which is manifested in many things like uh, hormone problems which I'll talk about that in a different video um, and so for me I really noticed that kind of the gap between how I was feeling up here and what is going on in my lower chakras my root my feeling of belonging my feeling of expression and sexuality and sensuality and the feeling yeah my my home where my home should be was not is not necessarily always my home I'm a little bit disconnected there and dissociating and that's really natural so if any of you have ever been in those relationships that you know you shouldn't been in or situations um especially around sex and sexuality and the space that you should feel really safe and seen in and if you're not then you can end up dissociating so this is something that I'm anew and that I'm exploring right now so we've been doing some amazing practices that I literally cannot wait to share with the world. Um, but first I have to really experience them myself and know that these are things that I've been like dabbling in and I'm doing it in a held space with other women also expressing and also seeing me and holding me as well as holding each other is so transformative. We're on week one and I feel like I've got into that energy that I used to feel. Like I woke up today feeling... Um, adrenal fatigue so where you feel a little bit underlyingly shaky and a bit in stress response um, and I'm able to just sit with myself with that and uh, know it's there which I've been doing for a while and not have the urge to do so for me my response to that is that I feel like I'm not enough um, like I'm not doing enough and I, I do you know I've got the charity I've got my business I can just keep doing I can keep trying to please and actually in my current relationship um, is a really uh, lovely space that I've been able to realise that I don't need to be doing, yeah? I've, that's totally what I've learned the whole time. We w I wouldn't be in a relationship if that wasn't the case. And um, moving into that can be uncomfortable at times, yeah? Somebody is just loving you and holding you as your partner, um, regardless of what you're doing. You know, you're, you're, you're not doing anything. You could be lying in bed or you're crying or whatever, and they're, they're just holding space for you. And that helps me learn even more to do that for myself, which I was doing for a long time. Um, yeah, I was doing it. And that's, you know, why sometimes we can then avoid a relationship because we feel like we're doing it. I'm doing it. I'm holding space for myself and I don't want anybody to stop me doing that. But the beauty of it is if you're around the right people, they will also encourage you to do that and also hold space for you and you hold space for them. So I'm going to end there because I could just go on all day, but this is really actually quite therapeutic for me to explain where I am so we've done qigong every day we've been doing um we did some dao yoga yesterday we've been doing trauma release exercises belly dancing with veils and um sharing circles and all these amazing practices um microcosmic orbit breathing and shakti meditation which is oh, just amazing cannot wait to do this with all of you um yeah, and it's all, I've, I've really noticed my energy come alive, or it's there anyway, but I'm noticing it, and I'm waking it, and allowing it to be exactly as it is, just being held by all these beautiful women, and seen exactly as I am, so I really hope that I can inspire you to feel the same, that whenever you're, especially maybe with other people, but know that with me, if you're in my class, you're in my friend, you know, friend, you come to me, you just want to reach out. I'm here and I see you. And I love you. <laughs> so I hope you all have a great day. I'm missing you all. I can't wait to show you more. I'm going to post some videos and photos today. I haven't really been on my phone at all. So very, very nice. And um, for those of you that do yoga with me, um, I really thank you for all your patience this week with getting getting there with the systems, um, things that are going to hold hold you while I'm here. I'm going to give a weekly update and um, post this on YouTube and on all my groups. So 
just any messages please do reach out to me i'd love to hear what you think of everything and what you're all doing as well okay well from buddha here who really held space for me this week <laughs> when i was crying a lot i'm going to say goodbye i'm going to go and chill by the pool and have some breakfast and just go into my yin today doing absolutely nothing <laughs> so love you all and take care